Spencer Cox was appointed to the Utah's 8th Lieutenant Governor on October 16, 2013, at the time of his selection by Gary, uh, Governor Gary Herbert. He was serving in the Le Utah Legislature and had previously served as a County Commissioner and Mayor of Fairview uh, City in San Pete County, Utah. Well, thank you, Mike. It's an honor to be with you, and I know what you're all thinking. Wait a minute. We have a keynote speaker? I thought it was time to go home, so so I'll be brief. But um, I, I got to tell you, um, it's been uh, these resumes of, of these, these those of you who received awards were, were really impressive. I'm sitting here thinking, the governor made a big mistake. Any one of these guys could have been the, uh, the lieutenant governor. So uh, th this has really been a, a fantastic evening. Now, um, one of the warnings I have to give you is that I did. I was born and raised in Fairview, Utah, um, a small town, about 1,200 uh, people, uh, about the same distance from Salt Lake City as Logan, only the other direction, about 100 miles south. And uh, um, it, growing up in rural Utah, I wasn't blessed with a filter. So um, the filter that runs between my brain and my mouth, sometimes I just say what I think. and and it gets me in trouble. But um, the, uh, as I, I always wanted to go into marketing, and I always kind of fancied myself a little bit of a marketer. So, so Mark, I apologize, but I was looking at the great slogans that they had come up with for this, this branding campaign, and they were, they were really impressive. But as I sit here tonight and I look at this group and I hear all the incredible things that are happening, um, the, the slogan that, that I came up with that I, I would encourage you to use is, Logan, we've got our crap together. And uh, <laughs> you, you really do. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You're the envy of the state everywhere I go. 3.5% unemployment. I, I don't know that you realize how impressive that is. I mean, that's, that's better than full employment, really. It's, it's, it's just incredible. And I sit here and think, man, 3.5% unemployment, and they're, they're out there trying to get more jobs to come here. Now we're just getting a little greedy. We're just showing off. But that's OK. It, it's, it's fantastic. And it's what makes the state of Utah great. Um, as, as you lead, as, as you lead by example as you uh, as you work hard to bring those jobs here and to do the things that are important uh, to make the state of Utah great. Um, as was mentioned, uh, I graduated from Utah State University. And I'm, I'm very proud of that, but there is a story behind it, and some of you know that. But I, and in, in full disclosure, I, I had grown up uh, wanting to go to BYU. I was I was going to be a Cougar. That was my uh, that was my goal. I had just had everything planned out. Got home from my from uh, an LDS mission and got engaged to my wife who also grew up in San Pete County. And I said, and she accepted for some reason. Um, and uh, we, we talked for a while. I said, you know, I'm really excited to go to BYU. And, and she said, that's great. Have fun at BYU. I'm going to Utah State. And uh, I'm an Aggie. So um, you, you can see how things work in our house. And uh, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, both decisions, to marry her and to become an Aggie. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly and eternally grateful for the, the education that I received here. It has impacted my life on a daily basis and, and probably more so now than ever before. I had an opportunity to be back on campus today to speak with students about using uh, social media in, uh, in campaigns and, and elected office and, and just had an incredible interaction with the students there. And as I come back to Logan, it's, it's so fun. It's, it's been about 15 years since I graduated graduated as I drive down the street and I look at what's changed in 15 years um, and and I, I learned tonight that everything that, that has changed is really because of Deloy so Deloy thank you <laughs> every every building I go by it's, it's just incredible um, you know there, there's a couple things that haven't changed there's still a little traffic and and the air gets a little uh, a little gunky at times but uh, one of the things that's that's really changed since I was here is how about that football team Right? <laughs> this is incredible. I mean, I just spent the weekend um, at meetings um, in, in, at the Aspen Institute in Colorado. And uh, for the first time, I think, ever, uh, when talking about sports and things, everybody was asking me about Utah State. Not once did I get a question about BYU. Not once did I get a question about the University of Utah. I had at least five people say, hey, what is going on with Utah State? If you think that doesn't make a difference, I mean, just to the general psyche of uh, Utah State fans everywhere. It's, uh, my, uh, it, it's, it's been so nice that we don't have to go to the psychiatrist every year to kind of get over our grieving. Uh, but, but it makes a difference in, in a way um, that goes back to the branding. It's, people have this positive, this positive feel about Utah State and what's happening, and that impacts Logan directly. And so you, it's really impossible to put a monetary value on it. But as I talked to President Albrecht today, we're seeing that happen. People want to go here. And they 
they don't want to go here because there's a good football team, but at, at least there, there's just this positive aura that comes um, from. And, and like I said, if you, if you want to recruit anybody uh, to come to uh, to Logan or Utah State, just take them to a basketball game because there is no experience like that in the world. It really is incredible. So um, congratulations to Utah State and to all of you and, and the great things that are happening. Uh, I'd also like to, to just say uh, a couple words about the incredible representation that you have here in the Cache Valley. Um, it, it really isn't fair. Um, now, I know that the representation in, in the legislature is, is broken down by population, and every 10 years we redraw that. But um, it may be based on population, but, but you guys always seem to get the, the, the best of that because you have incredible representatives. Representative Red's here tonight, and, and I can never say enough about uh, Senator Senator Hilliard and just the incredible, just the the person that he is first and foremost. He he commands the respect of everyone in the room, but but at the same time he also has this incredible knowledge of of the budget process and other things that we just don't get anywhere else. There's a reason that that he's in charge of the budget in the Senate, which is is far and away the most important job that happens there. And uh, there's a reason you've been very blessed in the uh, in the things that have happened in this great valley and at, the, at at Utah State University. And he deserves all the accolades that he's received. I'd also like to point out, she, she said that she was going to leave because she doesn't want to listen to me, but um, if you haven't heard, one of your own was selected by uh, Governor Herbert, and I may have had a little something to do with it, uh, to serve as his education advisor, and that's Tammy Pfeiffer. Tammy, would you stand up? Say hi. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a really big deal, and, and Tammy and I are kindred spirits, and um, we're going to uh, we're going to change the world when it comes to education or die trying. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, the uh, they they ask if I would take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit more about myself. And after what I've said so far, you probably don't want to know any more about me. But I would like to just share one, one of the questions I get everywhere I go, and 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 I apologize. I know a couple of you may have heard this, uh, but I get us how. I guess, how on earth did you become the lieutenant governor? And they, they ask it very nicely, but I, I, know, I know what they're trying to say. And so um, I thought for just a minute I, I would just pull back the curtain a little bit and tell you about that process, since it was just a couple months ago and, and um, people, people at least pretend to want to know. So um, if you'll indulge me, I'll share that with you. As was mentioned, I had served um, as, a, as a mayor of, of Fairview, which is um, probably less impressive than any one of you um, being elected like senior class president or something. I think three hundred people voted in that in that election so um, and, and then I had a chance to be a county commissioner for four years and with redistricting I, I was then able to um, to go into the House of Representatives for a year when Greg Bell, who many of you know, former Lieutenant Governor, decided that he was going to uh, go back into the private sector, I, w I was stunned. Greg was a really good friend of mine. And, and in fact, I, was, I, w I wasn't just stunned, I was upset. And um, Senator Steve Elison and I were having a conversation just after that announcement, and we both decided that we were really mad at the new guy. We didn't know who the new guy was yet, but we were really upset at whoever that was going to be because they wouldn't be Greg Bell. And uh, I, th I think Steve's still a little upset at the, at the new guy. but. Um, we, uh, the, the, the process started, and, and those of you who kind of followed it, it had been a couple weeks and the governor hadn't made an announcement yet. And, and as members of the legislature, I know we were all trying to kind of figure out uh, what might be happening. And, and uh, um, kind of just, just out of nowhere, I got a call. It was a Friday afternoon, and um, I have a Google Voice account, um, some of you that are familiar with that, and it's, it's, it's the, the number that I give out to my constituents to call when, when, they, when they had issues. It was a Friday night. I was with my family. I thought, you know, I'll get back to whoever that is. I didn't recognize the number, and um, they left a voicemail, and, and with Google Voice, it, it, it sends you a text with the, the body of the, the voicemail, and it's, it's not very accurate. It usually says kind of things that don't make sense, but this time it made perfect sense. It just said, Representative Cox, this is Governor Gary Herbert. I'm anxious to speak with you. Please call me. And uh, I thought, oh, oh no, this, this can't be good. Uh, why would the governor be calling me on a Friday afternoon? I thought, that's a call I should probably return. So, um, so I called him back and he said, hey, um, 
He said, as you know, I'm looking for a new lieutenant governor, and I just, I, I just wanted to get your input. Is, is that okay? I said, sure, governor. I'd be happy to give you my input. And uh, he said, can we meet on Monday? I said, sure, we can do that. And he said, and don't tell anybody because there's a lot of speculation um, about what's, you know, what's going on there. I said, that's fine. So I um, hung up and I, I think I thought, well, that's really weird. Why would the governor call me? Why would he want my input? I thought, well, well maybe he wants some rural input because there's no way he's going to choose somebody from rural Utah. It just doesn't make sense. And um, maybe he wants some input. And then I thought, well, maybe he's calling all the legislators. Uh, but I thought, God, doesn't he have people for this? I mean, I could give him input over the phone. I mean, surely he's got somebody I, that, that could make this call. So I thought, well, I'll call a couple of my colleagues in the house and just, you know, just see if he's calling them. Um, and so I called and I said, hey, did you get a call from the governor, you know, asking for your input? And uh, he said, no, why, did you? And I said, uh, no, but I heard, <laughs> I heard he's been calling people. I was just, just curious. So, um, so, so on Monday, I go and I meet with the governor, and he, he had a charity golf tournament that day at the country club in Provo, and a very nice uh, clubhouse. They have a lot of weddings there, and so I, I went in the back door, and security kind of ushered me up to this. He said, we have a room set up for you, sir. I'm like, oh, okay. So I go up there, and it was the bridal dressing room, and uh, <laughs> I go, well, this is a little awkward, so I go in and sit down, and eventually the governor comes in, and we sit down, and we, we have a lovely conversation, and he, he really he did just want my input. He asked me uh, wh what he should be looking for in a lieutenant governor, and uh, he asked me to give him some names of people I thought might be good. And he said, now I'm going to give you some names and tell me what you think, and he gave me nine or ten names, and we went through it. I thought, he really did just want to know what, what, I, what I thought. He wanted my input. I said, I can't wait to tell my wife be because she doesn't want my input most of the time. And this is, this is really cool for me. So we, we just finished up and, and, and I was about to leave and the governor said, I, I have one more name for you. I said, okay. okay. And uh, he gave me my name. And um, I, I, don't, I don't remember much about what happened after, after that. My head was kind of spinning. And uh, he said, well, he said, I want you to know that I've narrowed it down to, to I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got about five or six people in mind. And, and you're one of those. And uh, I'll get back to you. So I drove home and, and was just kind of stunned and I thought there's just, there's just no way this is going to happen. I know he probably had to have somebody from rural Utah just to say he considered somebody and that's fine. So um, I got home two days later I got a call from the governor and, and he called and he said um, I'd, I'd like you to come up and meet with me again. Is that okay? And I said sure governor I'll do whatever. He said come up to the mansion and, and uh, I just want to ask you some more questions. I said fine. So um, it, it, he said oh and, and can you bring your wife? I went, oh, oh no. Um, I, I did that with a state president once and it did not end up well. So, <laughs> the worst five years of my life. So, we, uh, so I, I go home and my, my wife had just left the house. It was, it was in the morning. I lived about a mile from, from uh, where I work and I went home and, and she, she likes to run in the morning after she drops the kids off to school and um, she was just going out for a morning run and um, she saw me come and she said, what's the matter? I said, well, the governor wants to meet with us, but go run. You need to do that. This is, that's, it's cheaper than therapy. That's her, her sanity. So, uh, so she started to run and I went home and she came in about three minutes later. I said, well, that was, that was fast. She said, yeah, it's hard to run when you're hyperventilating. So, um, so, so we, we got ready. We went up, met with the governor, had a, had a wonderful conversation with the governor and his wife about an hour and a half. And um, he said, well, I've narrowed it down to two or three at this point, and, and we're going to start the vetting process. So at that point, the attorneys got involved, kind of turned my life upside down and, and uh, asked a lot of questions, go through every Facebook post I'd made in the last five years, making sure there's nothing that would embarrass the governor and had me delete some that would embarrass me. So, um, so we went through that process on, on, that was on a Wednesday. On, on Thursday, I thought it was me. On Friday, I thought it was me. On Saturday, I was pretty sure it was not me. On Sunday, I was really sure it wasn't me. And then on Monday, he called and, um, and asked me to serve. And uh, on Tuesday, the announcement was made. So it was, it was one of the longest and kind of craziest um, experiences of our life. And, and I, I, I tell you all that just to say this. Um, for me, it, it was not an easy decision. Um, I, I know, you know, I, I know I won the lottery, and I recognize that. In fact, uh, the, the talking heads in the paper had had handicapped the. Uh, 
the, the race or the, you know, the, uh, the, the possibilities for this position. And they had 30 names on that. And the first line of the piece uh, in the Desert News was, if you're not on the list, what's wrong with you? And uh, I was the not on the list. And uh, so I was as shocked as everyone else when the, when the governor made the announcement. Um, and, and so I, you know, I, I like to say, you know, I'm really moving up in the world now. Now people, uh, people ask me, you know, are you moving your family? And I, I told the governor, no, that, that was a deal breaker for us. He wanted us to move. And I said, you know, uh, this is where my support system is for my family. My parents, my wife's parents, our siblings live there. Um, and and I'm f I love where I'm from, uh, and just just like all of you. And and if you're going to take me out of that, you, you know, you, you wanted me because I'm different. I'm different because of where I live. If you want me to be like everybody else, just move me to Salt Lake. And uh, I'm, I, I just can't do that. So if you need to find somebody else, I understand. But but we worked it out. Um, I drive about 90 minutes um, almost every day. My uncle has a, has a basement apartment in Bound that, that some of his kids just moved out of that I get to stay in on the nights that are long. And so I say, you know, I'm, I, I, I am. I'm really moving up in the world. I, I took a big cut in pain. I live in my uncle's basement. So um, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't get much better than that. But people ask me why you do it. And uh, there's a couple reasons why you do it. First of all, and this is really important, the lieutenant governor's office has its own bathroom. And I've always wanted a job where you're in an office with your own bathroom. So that's, that's one of the great parts of it. And, and more seriously, though, uh, this is, this is why I, I do it. I get to come out and just meet some incredible people. And, and, and to do so, to represent uh, this state that is just the most incredible state in the union. When I said I was back in Aspen, Colorado last week, I was there with, with 24, 23 other people, 24 of us, 12 Republicans, 12 Democrats, all um, uh, highly elected officials from other states under the age of 45, where we had a chance to sit around, nonpartisan, remove all partisanship, and and talk about the, the history of democracy, the history of our republic, the history of our constitution. We got to debate Plato and, and, and Aristotle and Locke and Jefferson and, and um, just, just all the incredible thought leaders of our time, and, and all the way Martin Luther King, and, and talk about how we became a country, what it is that makes us great. And I will tell you, after listening to the things that are happening in their state, you couldn't trade, uh, you couldn't convince me to trade what we have here for, for anything going on anywhere else in this country. We really are the brightest star on the flag. We are, we are the envy of states everywhere. People want what we have. And what we have is people. People that are willing to work together. People that understand that there's a difference between disagreeing and being disagreeable. People that understand that it's okay to have an opinion, it's not okay to be opinionated. People that understand that we stand on principle, we have principle, principle informs us and principle drives us, but principle is not the end all. People matter. And that when principle gets in the way of people, that's when we start to have dysfunction in our country. We have a place where I can sit down with my colleagues who vehemently disagree with me on so many issues, and we can come to an understanding, and we can go to dinner afterwards, and we can still be friends and not hate each other. That's what makes Utah great. It's people who understand the value of hard work, that there, that there is joy, and, and that there is value in, in, in giving to other people. We lead the nation in volunteerism, and it's not even close. But I would remind us that it's important to step out of our own, of our own wards, our own synagogues, our own churches, and, and to serve those who don't look like us, to serve those who don't talk like us, who serve those who are different from us. Because again, that's what's making us great. Our state's changing. It's changing in positive ways. It's changing in negative ways. There are some very controversial things happening in our state. But that doesn't mean that we can't love each other. It doesn't mean that we can't stand side by side and say, we're Utahns first. We'll disagree about these things. We'll argue about them. We'll stand on our principle. But at the end of the day, I can shake your hand and we can be friends. I'm honored to be here with you tonight. I'm honored to represent the great state of Utah. And I'm excited about the things that are happening here in Cache Valley. Um, since y'all didn't adapt my slogan, um, if you heard at the end of the video, there, there was one that, that I loved. It said, Logan, just moments away from greatness and dangerously close to perfect. You're almost there. Keep up the good work and thank you.